Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for coming tonight on Christmas Eve. We'll join in our call to worship, which may be a little hard to read. Um, so people who can read, just speak louder. I'll read the regular print if you're able to read the emboldened. Or use your cell phone flashlight. Our call to worship comes from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of his peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it. With justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our first hymn is hymn number 173. O oh, come all ye faithful. Hymn number 173.
it, but you want to come help light the okay. candles? Okay, so I've got candles. <clears throat> Church. Church. Not church. We're lighting. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, you made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light when you gave your eternal word to become incarnate of the pure virgin. Grant that we may shine with that holy light in word and deed as we welcome Christ into our hearts this night and evermore. Amen. And the middle one. And the Christ candle, buddy. There we go. Our next hymn is hymn number 171. Not yet, bud. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hymn number 171. changes a little bit so if you wanted to say sons of earth I was with you no one will bother if you do do that don't worry about it our first gospel lesson is taken from the holy gospel according to st. Luke Luke chapter 1 beginning at verse 26 Luke chapter 1 beginning at verse 26 In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But she was greatly troubled at this saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. 
And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born of you will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Our next hymn is hymn number 160. Hymn number 160, O Holy Night.
Our second gospel lesson is taken from St. Matthew's Gospel. Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The word of the Lord. Our next hymn is hymn number 147, Away in a Manger. Hymn number 147. And if you say, well, I like the other tune, I believe we're singing the other tune either next Sunday or the Sunday after. So come visit us on Sunday. <laughs> hymn number 147. <laughs> Caesar Augustus, that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, 
because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I will bring for, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among men. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is hymn number 152. Angels we have heard on high. Hymn number 152. Oh, 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 oh. 
wonder, that means glory to God in the highest. Or glory to God in the highest degree. You can go both ways in the Latin, but that's what that means. Our fourth and final gospel lesson is taken from Matthew again. St. Matthew, beginning in the second chapter. St. Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, <coughs> from the glory, sorry, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests, and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going to the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, the, magi the wise men departed to their own country by another way. The word of the Lord. Our next hymn is hymn number 185. Forgot my hymnal. Hymn number 185. We three kings of Orient are. Hymn number 185. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Our scripture lesson is taken from the book of the prophet Micah, beginning in the middle of the fifth chapter. Chapter 5, verse 4b to 5a. The latter half of 4 to the beginning half of 5. He shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we thank you that you have called us to peace, to peace with you and peace with one another, that by the angel you have proclaimed peace and goodwill among men with whom your favor rests, that you have called us to peace even when we were enemies from you. Help us to latch on and to hold to that peace amidst a world which so often cries for war. Help us not to follow after those who cry peace and safety where there is none, but to find our peace in you and to rest in your Son, our Savior, the virgin-born Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come to the Christmas Eve service, I always say it's a very special time. Not because we sing seven hymns instead of four. Not because we do it in the darkness with the beautiful twinkly lights. But because I do a sermon under ten minutes instead of, you know, 30 to 40, 45 sometimes. Because when we come to Christmas, we don't always need to say a lot. I know, it's a shock to hear me say that. But you don't always need to say a lot because there's not a lot that can be said when you know what the Christ child is. There's a lot that can be written about the incarnation. God became man. God took human flesh. God dwells with us and our flesh now dwells with him on high. There's a lot that can be said about that. There's a lot that can be said about the historical events around Christmas, from Herod to the wise men to the census. There's a lot that can be said about the events surrounding the birth with Mary and Joseph and the angels. In fact, we just spend a whole month worth of candles talking about it. But when you get to the manger, when you get to the feeding trough and you find the child Wrapped in swaddling clothes. The bread come down from heaven, born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. Found in a feeding trough and born to be our sacrifice. Wrapped in clothes and cloth like a mummy. There's not a lot to be said. To see a newborn phrased as feast and sacrifice, to see a king laid among oxen and cows and manure and hay, to see the Lord of all creation himself being suckled and nourished by his creatures. There's not a lot we can say because we are stunned by the silence and the majesty of our God's condescension. The mightiest, the highest, the glory and excelsis Deo, the God on high, became so lowly that he became our bread, our food, our sacrifice in death, and our king who lived as a commoner, a pauper, a man to whom no one would offer a place to lay his head. Even foxes had dens, he would say, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That's the love that God has for us. When we see that, we are stunned by it. From the very moment of his birth, he was destined to die. Eight days in, at the very naming of his name, He first bore his blood, and they named him Jesus, 
the salvation of his people. When the wise men came to seek him, they came to this chapter, to Micah. They quoted, You, O Bethlehem of Thretta, who are little among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth the ruler in Israel, who is coming forth from of old, from ancient days. And at the end of this section, he says, He will be great to the ends of the earth. Where was that greatness when he was in a feeding trough? Where was that greatness when he was surrounded by dung? Where was that greatness when those who came to offer him their first worship, besides his parents, were the shepherds in the fields? He shall be great to the ends of the earth precisely because he does not hold to that greatness. He does not insist upon it. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Beyond the carols and the cookies, and if you haven't tasted my wife's cookies back there, do so. They're amazing. Beyond all those amazing things, beyond the sugar plums that kids dream of in the Twas the Night Before Christmas story, there is a sweetness that while we were yet enemies with God, God became our peace. And that's what it goes on to say. He is our peace. Beyond where he was born, beyond the fact that he'd be great, that's the core. He is our peace. In the midst of all this, we have peace with God. God has declared his peace for us by sending us his son. And we have peace with each other and with him through the Christ child. Through him who has made our peace with his own blood. He came that we might have peace. A peace that passes all understanding. A peace that is unshakable. A peace not as the world gives does he give it. But his own peace. My peace I leave with you, he says. My peace I give unto you. That peace which extended from God to us and quelled us while we were yet thumbing our noses and worse at God has now left its peace within us. The Holy Spirit. And we are now both at peace with God and proclaim the peace of God to all men. That's the glory of Christmas. Our Lord has come, but not in a chariot, not in a manger, not even in a cradle, but in a feeding trough. Because he came to bring and make peace to the lowest and the least of us. And when we see a sweet child wrapped for death, lying in a place to be fed, and call him the king, our God, our savior, that should stop us. That should stun us. That should cause us to hold our peace. Because he is our peace. As the Christmas season draws to a close or a beginning, depending on how your celebrations go, beginning for the church close for most of us, peace can be hard to find because we have to get checks mixed done and we have to make sure that this set of in-laws doesn't talk to that set of in-laws or else there will be no peace that night. And we have to make sure that this person feels all right and that that person feels like they have attention. And we have to make sure that this gets done and that gets done. And we have to make sure that this is bought and that these people don't discover the presence in the corner. And we have to, and we have to, and we have to, and we have to. Our peace, when he was in flesh, once said many things keep you busy, Martha. Many things are needful, but one thing above all do you need. To sit and learn from me. My sister has it. I will not take it away. 
If we sit and learn, he is our peace. If we sit and find peace at the manger, if we sit just for 10, 15 minutes and contemplate the peace that he brings, that he offers, that he gives, we will begin to discover what this verse means when it says, he is our peace. It doesn't say he makes peace for us, although he does. It doesn't say that he will proclaim peace, although he does. He is, full stop, our peace. No matter how perfect your table, it can't be found there. No matter how joyous your life, it can't be found there alone. The only place for perfect and abiding peace lies in the one who had no peace outwardly, and yet such peace that people sought him out. The Son of Man who had nowhere to lay his head. He is our peace. Rest, abide in him. Look, under 10 minutes, Christmas miracle. <laughs> Let's pray, shall we? Lord, you are our peace, our hope, the source of our eternal life. To serve you is no servitude, but is perfect freedom. To love you is no burden, but is everlasting joy. And to find our rest in you is not, as the world sees it, necessarily wise. For you have come to throw away the wisdom of the world and to shame them by choosing things that were not wise in their eyes. You have chosen us as the first fruits of your glorious redemption. Help us who find our peace in you to spread that peace abroad so that all men may know how to have peace and love with each other and with you. For we ask all things in the name of your dear Son, who was born this night. Help him to be born anew in the hearts of those who do not know him, and help him to be kept in our hearts by those who do. We offer up all these requests to you in the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When Christ, our peace and our sacrifice, was about to offer up his life for us, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body to be given up for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. Let's pray. We offer you thanks, O oh Lord, not only for the child born in the manger, born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, to be bread of the world, but for his life-giving death and his death-defying resurrection. Help us who celebrate this table tonight to remember that it is by his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection that we have life, peace, joy, and freedom. We offer you thanks for all the many joys that you have given us this year and this night and for that which is to come. Help us to come to your table and find peace in you, for truly, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have made peace with us, and you are our peace. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you.
St. Paul tells us, the bread which you break, is it not a communion in the body of Christ? Take and eat, this is my body. In the same way, after supper, our Lord and our peace took the cup, and again he gave thanks to his Heavenly Father. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, drink of it. This is my blood of the new and of the everlasting covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Bless us, O Lord, and send us forth with your blessing. Help us to be a blessing to others. And as we take up the cup of blessing and call upon your name, help us to remember that it was not through the blood of bulls and goats shed that we were redeemed, but by the blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was born this night in the midst of darkness to be the light of the world, who has called us to go forth and to be the light of the world, his body. Help us to dwell in him and he in us and to proclaim him unto the ends of the world that all the coastlands may come and stream to the light of his rising and see the glory of his salvation. For we ask all things in his name together with yours, for you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit is one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Paul again tells us a cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not a communion in the blood of Christ? Take and drink, this is my blood. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until it's coming again in glory. Our final hymn will be Silent Night, and we will light our candles as we sing it. I'll light it from the Christ candle, and then we'll just spread it out through the congregation. If anyone wants to save the candle for kiddo to blow out, he might be your friend Best for friend. like forever. <laughs> or until the next Paw Patrol episode, one of the two. Can't hold the lit candle straight and turn, and those candles are trying to light. It makes hot wax not cool on your hands. Hymn number 164, Silent Night, Whenever All the Lights Get Red. What's that? Oh, that'd be great, yeah. Good idea. Thank mm -hmm. you. 